Right. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to give the completely formal definition of limit. Now that we've got this completely formal definition of cone. So remember that a cone over D with vertex U, I'm going to change this to V now, because we're interested in general cones, is a natural transformation from this functor to D. And what we're looking for is one that's universal among all of those things. So the first thing we have to think about is the totality of all cones. So the totality of cones, the totality of cones is the set of natural transformations. So it's natural transformations between functors from I to C that start at V and end at D. So this is the totality of all cones with vertex V. So we're going to be doing something with this load of natural transformations. And if you just stare at the formula immediately, it can be completely baffling. So I'm going to say two words of warning first. Maybe it's going to be two. We'll see. Um, first of all, what we're trying to say is for all, for every cone, there exists a unique factorization. Now, whenever anybody says for every something or other, there exists a unique something or other, there must be some kind of bijection going on because it's a for all, there exists unique, right? Now, in category theory, we're not interested so much in bijections. We're interested more in some kind of sensible isomorphism between things in some category. And the point here is that we've got, for all one of these, a unique thing here. But it's not any old morphism. It's a factorization, which means there's some commuting condition here. And whenever you see in category theory, for all something or other, there exists a unique factorization, or possibly even a unique something such that, what it usually means is that there's a natural isomorphism. Not just any old isomorphism, but an isomorphism that satisfies the naturality. And the naturality of that isomorphism is the thing that tells you that this is actually determining some kind of composition condition. So what we're going to have is a natural isomorphism between something and something else. And I think I'm just going to uh, write it down at this point. So given a diagram D, from I to C, a limit uh, for it is a natural isomorphism okay. so on the one hand we've got cones right and not necessarily cones over with the same vertex so I'm going to put a a little blank sign there because we don't know what the vertex is going to be and I'll explain that more in a second. And it's for all cones there is a unique morphism from V to U. Right, so maybe I can put this V in here because at any given moment we're thinking about the vertex V over here. So how do we write morphisms from V to U? Well that's morphisms from V to U. So there's a natural isomorphism here which is natural in V. And um, I suppose what I should really say is a limit for it is an object U is an object U and a natural transformation like this. So often when we talk about the limit for the diagram, we think mostly about this object U, which is the vertex of the cone. But we should always remember that this thing comes equipped with this entire cone. And you can see from this definition that the object U is just barely the tip of the iceberg. And that this natural isomorphism is what's going to give us the fact that it's a universal cone. So how on earth is this a universal cone? How does that correspond to universal cone? Well, there are several ways of looking at this. But one way is to think about the Yoneda lemma. The Yoneda lemma says that any isomorphism like this is completely determined by uh, where the identity map goes over here. Right? So U certainly is a morphism in C. So in particular, if we put V to be equal to U, we'll get something from there to the cones that have their vertex as u, right? 
And so, in the, among all the morphisms from U to U, there certainly is an identity from U to U. So under this natural isomorphism, this has to go somewhere, right? And the point is that it has to go to a cone. And I'm going to explain to you why this particular cone is a universal one. So the Yoneda, the Yoneda lemma tells us that the entire natural transformation is determined by where this, where this identity goes. And so that's kind of telling us that this, to give a natural transformation, yeah. To give a natural isomorphism like this is precisely the same as giving a universal cone like this. So for a start, all I've seen, all I've shown you so far is that it's giving us a cone. Uh, a cone. Is it universal? So now we have to look at the naturality of this thing. And I'm beginning to be a little bit dubious about whether I'm going to be able to do it. Oh, I've got, I've got a little bit of time, so let's see. What does naturality say? It's going to say, for all morphisms, um, well, in this case, given any morphism from V to U, well, what are we going to get? We're going to get a morphism going that way from the set of morphisms U to U, we can pre-compose with a morphism from V to U and get a morphism from V to U, right? And so uh, our naturality square is going to be the comm commutativity of this thing. So what we have to do is see what on earth this morphism here is here. And what this morphism actually does is it takes any cone based at U and it gives us back a cone based at V. In what way does it give it back to us? Well, if you can work through the formula here and you can find out that the way that you start with a cone at U and produce a cone at V, given this morphism from V to U, is exactly the way you think it is. You start with a cone at U, you're given a morphism from V to U, and it produces for you, by composition, a cone at V. So what this is saying is, well, it's sort of the other way around from how we did it before, because what we did before was that we started with a cone at V, and we produced the factorization, and it was a unique one. What I've sort of done here is I've started with the factorization, and I've produced the cone. And because this is a natural isomorphism, what it's saying is that there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between the factorizations and the cones, and it has, and that moreover, the naturality is telling us that that correspondence has to be by composition in this way. So what that's telling us is that this cone that we identified here really is universal, and the universal property corresponds to yes, the universal property comes from. The naturality. Which naturality? That naturality. I might explain that more next time. <laughs>